The man in this photograph is a fellow by the name of Sir Oswald Mosley, who was the head of the British Union of Fascists in the 1930s and the closest thing Britain had in that era to an Adolf Hitler. Um, in contrast to Adolf Hitler, who actually went on to rule his country and lead it to destruction, uh, Oswald Mosley became more or less a bad joke, a sick joke, and never really amounted to anything in British politics. Which is interesting because most people agree when they compare him to Adolf Hitler, they note that he was, in many ways, a lot smarter, far smarter than Hitler. His ideas on economics were far ahead of their time, and most of his policies, or a great number of his policies, at least economic policies, were implemented, implemented in Britain after the Second World War, but his career was a complete failure. Um, the interesting thing about him is he was uh, in his heyday just as much of an anti-Semitic rabble-rouser as any other fascist leader in Europe but he began his political career according to some sneeringly dismissive of anti-Semitism seeing it as a lowbrow gutter form of nationalism whereas he was attempting uh, early in his career to allow people who were by his definition, fit to rule, to rule. And in th that view of things, it didn't really matter if somebody was Jewish or non-Jewish or of any ethnic uh, affiliation. If they were fit to rule, they were fit to rule. His biographers often point to the fellow in the lower left of the photograph, a fellow by the name of Alexander Raven Thompson, as the one who introduced Mosley to anti-Semitism, not as a visceral sort of political ideology, but as a simple tactic to gain votes in uh, among the lower class nationalists, uh, particularly in London, although elsewhere in, in the UK. In other words, it is entirely possible that Oswald Mosley was an insincere anti-Semite. He may have spouted off all his anti-Semitic vitriol, but he might not have actually meant it in the same way as, say, Hitler would have meant it. It was simply a tactic to him. I'm not really interested in having that debate, but what, I would, what interests me is how someone can be, be convinced to take that kind of an attitude with the politics of hate. It's simply a matter of expediency. In the movie Barfly, Mickey Rourke's character, who is actually Charles Bukowski's auto, or alter ego, uh, he's quoted as saying, hate, the only thing that lasts. And this, of course, is uh, a comment on the enduring nature of hatred and anger and how it can invigorate us and keep us invigorated for literally years on end. Anger and hate can drive people, can motivate people. And according to some people, Oswald Mosley was simply attempting to exploit that faculty that humans have for his own political ends. It's interesting how the, this sort of reflects upon the European public's need for scapegoats in the 1930s. At least in Mosley's case, it is alleged that he was simply responding to the perhaps subconscious needs of his constituents, or his would-be constituents, for someone to blame for everything. This is a theme that recurs in politics essentially since politics began. Instead of how do we solve this problem, an astute politician, and a rather unprincipled one, which Oswald Mosley certainly was utterly unprincipled, it might be easier, or at least faster or more expedient, to find someone to blame for one's problems rather than emphasizing the search for solutions to those problems. If we have a target and we eliminate that target, or at least we isolate it, we have then left the rest of us.
to live in peace and in an efficient, orderly, and happy society. The politics of scapegoating are as old as politics, as I said. What is it that Mosley tapped into? I'm not interested in what was going on in his mind in terms of his view of the Jewish people. What I'm interested in is what he sought in a particular reading of his motives, what he sought to gain by aping the anti-Semitism of his continental counterparts, such as Hitler and Mussolini and the various Eastern European fascist movements. What was he responding to that was already there? What is it about us that requires scapegoating? What is it in human nature that makes us want or perhaps need to denounce 